Hi there. I want to talk about five different ways that you can achieve more balance in your life. And you might think, well, what does that have to do with making money online? Your whole channel is about making money online. And now you're talking about balance in my life. Well, you're not going to be successful in making money online or in any other entrepreneurial uh, at, path that you take unless you learn how to find that balance and how to take charge of your life. Let me give you an example. We all have the same amount of time, right? And you notice that some people, no matter how much they have on their plate, they just seem to have everything organized and everything goes smoothly. Um, they, they just seem to have it more under control. And then you'll have other people that they're just always a hot mess. I remember when I was homeschooling my youngest two children that I met a woman. I was a single parent at the time. I was working two jobs, raising two children on my own and homeschooling. I was fortunate enough to have a job where I did it from home so I could do it, you know, in between. But I remember always thinking like I was always in a rush, always trying to get things done fast. I actually took pride in the fact that I could multitask and I was really fast at doing things back then. And then I met a friend that had nine children and she was homeschooling and she was so calm and everything always just went so smoothly and her life wasn't hectic. And I realized she has the same 24 hours a day that I have. Why is mine so hectic and rushed and why is her so calm? Well, she took the time to decide wh what she was going to do with her 24 hours and I didn't. I just let my 24 hours happen. I just always had this list that was thrown at me, all these tasks, and I didn't really take the time to make my time intentional, if that makes sense. I just kind of let life happen. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want you to think about what is your life like right now? Is it just happening and maybe you're blaming other things or are you really trying to be intentional with it? Are you trying to take charge of your life, take it back and not let it just happen? And that's what this is about. So I'm going to give you five different ways that you can start to get on track and start taking your life back and finding that balance. And it's going to integrate into every area of your life, even the area where you earn more money. Now, number one, I want you to think about why do you want balance in your life? Are you feeling frazzled? Are you feeling like things are out of control? And then what area do you want it in first because there are several different areas of our life we have relationships we have our jobs we have health we have um, recreational we've got all kinds of different areas and I'm not going to go in these now I'll have a, a video in the future that will specifically go into the areas but what I want you to do today is just think in general what is that one area in my life that I just feel like I don't have enough balance. I don't have enough time. Um, really balance is all about time. You're going to hear me put those two words together, but maybe you're working so hard and you don't feel like you have a good relationship with your children. You have to leave the house and go to work. But did you notice when you come home, you're still maybe on the phone, still taking an appointments and still working. You may not realize it, or maybe you feel like you have to, but do you, um, leave work at home at work and then when you're home be with your children or with your spouse or your your partner and don't blame your job for taking that time because you really do have a choice you really don't have to take all those extra calls you really have a choice to put it aside they'll be there tomorrow when you go back to work so start evaluating where you're spending your time what is that area that you really want to have better balance and then do something about it it may be as simple as Maybe your kids are all running in off different directions and you feel like everybody's eating dinner at a different time and you want to get back to where everybody sits at the table at the same time. Just make that a rule. We're eating at six, whatever time it is, and, and make it a half hour block and say, we all will meet at the table and we will have dinner together. And no matter what gets scheduled during that time, dinner comes first. So you have to prioritize. You have to decide what is most important to you. Don't let other things control your life. I'll never, I never forget. I remember when my son was playing baseball and there was a, one of the other coaches, he was one of those dads that his, his son was very, very good, but he was one of those dads that baseball came first. And we're talking back at nine to 12 years old. Um, my son played on a, in a league with this young man and 
I got to meet his wife and she was just really sad one summer, you know, they were, all the kids were invited to go to grandma's for the week or something. And, and she said, Oh no, you know, Billy can't go. And she said, because my husband says he has to be here. And I remember thinking, is it really that important that he has to give up his time a week with his grandparents just to play baseball? He was an awesome player. I'm not going to deny that, but was it going to make a big difference later in his life? And I know at that time, his dad was like, he's going to play for high school and then, you know, go to be a professional. Um, that was over 25 years ago and he didn't become a professional. And what did he give up to get to where he is? Do you know what I mean? So you have to decide what's more important. Um, if you want everybody at that dinner table, then have them at the dinner table because that's something your kids are going to remember and not remember um, constantly running around and not having that stability and that that unity and that memory of your family. If that's your goal, I'm not saying to do that, but think about what is important to you, why you want that, and then you're going to make the decision to use that time for what was important to you. Now, number two is really big. Avoid distractions in your life. Think about how much time you spend in front of the TV, reading magazines, on the internet, you know, surfing social media. Just think of all those mindless tasks that you do throughout the day and stop doing it. You know, you may have your favorite show or something, but when you go to watch it, one of the things my husband and I will do, I try really, I hate commercials. Um, I've, I went several years in my life without TV, but my husband likes TV. So, you know, obviously we're going to have it. And yes, now I have my favorite shows, but I tell him I'm only going to watch TV if it's DVR. I am not going to sit there through those commercials. And I finally got him in the habit of doing that because I said, look at all the time. We're going to gain probably 20 to 25 minutes just by not sitting there through those commercials. You know, and if we want to get up and wants to make popcorn or go to the bathroom or something, you can just pause it, go do what you have to do and come back. So if you have to watch TV, at least start doing something like that and control it. Maybe make a list of what are the shows that I absolutely love that I want to watch and start chiseling away from that. If you're just watching TV mindlessly or reading magazines mindlessly or, you know, surfing on the internet mindlessly, you're probably losing about four hours a day of your life. And did you know that the the average lifespan for an adult, if you lose four hours a day just doing those kinds of tasks, you're actually losing about 13 years of your life doing stuff like that. Now, hopefully that makes an impact. Now, if you want to cut that in half to six and do two hours a day, that's fine. Or an hour a day, you know, cut it back to maybe, you know, almost four days. But my point is, be cognizant of what you're doing with that time and think about what could I be doing instead. And if you notice again, finding balance is about how you decide to use the same time that you've been given as everybody else. We all have the same amount of time. We all have the same demands. It's how you look at it and how you use that time and how you decide to use that time that makes the difference. Now, number three, maybe some of you have this problem. Some of you don't, but it's another way that you can find balance. Are you the one that's always saying yes? Are you the one that everybody comes to when they need a favor and they need something done right? If you notice people who do things right and they do a lot are usually the ones that are asked to do more because you're the one that doesn't know how to say no. So learn how to say no. Sometimes I'm sure you feel obligated. You know, maybe it's to help the little league, uh, the, the team, you know, be the the uh, classroom room mom or something like that because you're so good at it and you never say no and you always show up you're reliable but what are you sacrificing to say yes to somebody else you're sacrificing that balance that you're craving in your home life what are you giving up to do those other things and again i'm not saying not to ever um, donate your time but again be cognizant of it what are you giving up to do that? And is it worth it? And obviously it's not because you wouldn't be watching this video if it was. So think about what are those things that I'm always volunteering to do and what, where can I start to cut back? I'll never forget the first time I said no, because I was that person. I was the one that was always trying to help and always saying yes. And sometimes it was like, I don't want to do it, but then I would do it anyway. And I just started to learn how to say no. And it felt so good. It was very empowering to be able to tell somebody else, no, I, I can't do it. Um, I'm a teacher. And the number one thing I always get asked to do is when I join a church, I'm, I'm within 
days after they find out I'm a teacher. Everybody wanted me to always ask me to do Sunday school. And not that I'm against um, teaching Sunday school. I've done it. But there's some times in my life where I didn't want to do it. Um, the couple times I can think of when I, I had class and I taught, I really enjoyed it. But it was also very empowering to say no when I didn't want to do it. So just because you're a teacher doesn't mean you have to go teach in all those other volunteer positions. My husband's a con contractor and everywhere we go, people are asking him, you know, can you help fix this or can you help fix that? And while he would love to be able to do that, it takes up his time and you're not paying paid for it and it's just not a good balance. So, you know, told, I told him the same thing. You have to decide when you want to say yes and when you, when you want to say no and it's okay to say no. And it, again, it's very empowering for you to be able to do that. You're taking charge of your own time and not letting somebody else make you feel guilty for not giving it to them. Number four, be more explicit communicating your time. And what I mean by this is, um, you can probably definitely practice this at work if you're ever in charge of meetings or anything like that. But if you have a meeting at two o'clock and it's supposed to end at 2.30, make sure it ends at 2.30. Don't be that person that always goes over and bleeds that time away from everybody else. Or don't be that person who it doesn't, you know, you always say, um, maybe you tell your family, I've got a meeting to go to and it's only going to be an hour and then you're gone for two or three hours because you hung around afterwards and talked to people. If you tell your spouse or tell your family you're going to be back, that something only takes so much time, then make it be only so much time. Be um, true to the time that you say it's going to take. And it's so easy. It's so easy to go someplace with some friends and you're only going to meet for lunch for like an hour, an hour and a half. And then before you know it, you've been sitting there for three hours. Now, if you had planned on three hours, that's great, but don't say I'm only going to be gone an hour and then you're gone half the afternoon. Um, because then you're, you're just letting time get taken away from you. It's being bled from you if you think about it and you're always going over. You would be amazed at how much time that you'll have back in your life that you could use to balance those other areas if you start paying attention to that. So be very explicit in that time. Now, if you'd like to hang around and talk for a little bit, give yourself 10 or 15 minutes to do that, but you don't need an hour or two hours to do that. Um, I know I have friends that after church, they like to hang around and talk to people. And maybe, you know, we've had a couple where we're trying to go to lunch with them and, and, you know, it gets to be <laughs> 20, 30 minutes and that can be, then you're bleeding into other people's time when you, when you do that as well. So be explicit and stick to it when you say something's going to take a certain amount of time, especially when you're in meetings and things like that. And even when you're in charge, because you're then taking other people's time away from them. When you said, I have a 30 minute meeting, then make it a 30 minute meeting. People will really appreciate for you and respect you for that as well. Number five is one that I think is the foundation of everything that you do as a person. And number five is if you want more balance, then take care of your own health. And you're like, well, what does that have to do anything? If you don't feel healthy and you don't feel strong and you don't feel good, then it's really hard for you to take control of anything else in your life. And that's why a lot of times maybe you are just sitting on the couch, you're exhausted and you just flop down on that couch and just stare at the TV. And you're allowing that your bad health now to take control. If you start eating better, you start exercising, start getting more sleep, you will start to feel better. And if you'd like to meditate, try that. And a lot of people say, I hate to exercise. Start doing yoga or something like that and maybe do it every other day. But start moving and start eating healthier. And it doesn't have to be where you go on this, you know, grand plan where you change everything in your life. Just change one thing at a time. Maybe you drink a lot of pop, you know, sugar's not good for you. It, it, it actually gives you a sugar high. That's why people drink it because you feel great. But then there's that sugar crash. You know that. And that's why you're on that couch just watching the TV mindlessly. Or maybe you're sitting in your chair mindlessly what, going through Facebook or something. You're tired. You've had a, a, you're crashing from that sugar. So if that's you, that can be your one small change. You cut out the sugar and the pop and things like that. Start drinking something that's healthier. And it's hard at first. It is hard. It's hard to break old habits, but when you do break them and you start doing things that are healthier to take care of you, you're going to find a huge difference in your life and you're going to have more energy 
and you're going to start working on finding that more balance and the time will start to be there and your family's going to notice it and you're going to just see all things start moving in a direction that's good so those are my five suggestions for you to find more balance in your life now if you are looking for to start a business and you, you don't know where to go and you're like, oh my gosh, I have nowhere to begin, I do have a startup guide below. And I know that doesn't have a lot to do with balance, but it gives you a step sheet, 12 steps and what you need to do to start a business. And it doesn't have to be the same business I have. It could be any business, any business online or offline. There's certain things that you need to do. So that startup guide is below. So go ahead and hit that link and hopefully um, you can kind of get an idea of what you need to do and eventually find that business that's right for you and find the balance that you need to be successful while you're doing it. Thanks for watching my channel and I promise to have more things about finding balance in your life while you're seeking that job that's going to give you your life back.